Hello, my name is Roman Dindihashvili, and this is the DVD about positional sacrifices. So it's part of a series of positional school and something that everyone has to be familiar with. Well, not everyone, just competitive player and players that try to get better. So, about the positional sacrifice, let me tell you what kind of a sacrifice I'm talking about. I'm talking about kind of a sacrifice that not big sacrifice. What I mean by that, when you don't sacrifice, for example, queen for a knight, this is not, this cannot be positional sacrifice. Queen for rook cannot be positional sacrifice. Queen for rook and knight may be positional because material is not too much different. So queen doesn't have that big of a different against, uh, advantage against uh, rook and a minor piece. Or an exchange sacrifice rook for a knight or rook for a bishop. Because then you have uh, to have some positional sacrifice to justify this minor deficit in material. When you sacrifice rook for a pawn, for example, you have to look for a bait or for a queening. So, and there are different type of positional compensations for small material deficit. And there are different kinds. For example, you may have two bishops, you may have pass pawns, or you may have very strong potential attack, strong center. Let's look at some of them. I think you should have a pretty good idea. We cannot cover all aspects of positional compensation on one DVD but you're going to have a pretty good idea what kind of a sacrifice I am talking about, what kind of a compensation, and we can go from one example to another, and I'm going to try explain it and justify it. First example, the game was played just a couple of weeks ago in Russia, between two world famous grandmasters, uh, Ponomarev was white and Peter Svidler was black. Very, very interesting game. So let's turn the board around and let's make this moves. D4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, d5, and as I always do in those cases, I'm going to go through the opening part of it real quickly, because opening is not part of our interest. Okay, knight d5, e4, knight takes c3, bc, bishop g7, queen a4, check, bishop d7, and queen a3. Uh, the idea of this uh, maneuver with the queen, they don't lose really much time bishop, because bishop on d7 doesn't stand to that great, and also white delays black's c5 attempt. After queen a3, knight c6, knight f3, e5, bishop e3, E takes D, C takes D, Queen E7, Queen takes E7, Knight takes E7, Rook B1, Castle for Black, Bishop C4. White has very strong center, and Black has slight advantage in development. So F5 was played. And now, after e5, 
black has good game after bishop c6. So white played knight g5. F takes e and knight f7. Obviously it was prepared at home. This is simple positional sacrifice. White is winning exchange. White is winning exchange and let's see what black gets for it. Knight f5, they immediately attack the d4 pawn. White castle. Knight takes d4. Bishop takes d4. There was possibility of playing uh, rook fd1 first, but then after bishop f5, black is doing well here. Bishop takes d4, rook takes d4. And now after rook takes d4, bishop takes d4, and we get position on very close to the one we got in the game. Black has two pass pawns on a queen side. They have three versus one. Material deficit is so minimal. It's a bishop for bishop and two pawns for a rook. Black has a good game. And I will explain you later in the game why this material equivalent is favorable for black. What happened in the game after knight takes d4, white plays bishop takes d4, bishop takes d4, knight takes h8, rook takes h8, bishop d5, b5. Now this way white wins back one of the pawns and now after b5 bishop takes e4 and c5 black has only one pawn for exchange but that was black's idea black deliberately went to this position and they are doing very very well why I will explain why. It's not because they have very dangerous pass pawns. No, they don't have very dangerous pawns. They have potentials of 3 versus 1 on the queen side. But most importantly, black controls the board. Bishop on d4 is just as good as any of white's rooks. Positional compensation is very big. After c5, g3 was played by white. They want to go king g2. a5, king g2, and b4. So now black has total control on the queen side. White does not have... They have two rooks versus one. It's good to have an open file where these rooks can dominate. But White doesn't have that file. Only open file is the E file. And it's very difficult to penetrate for white on the E file because there are almost no penetration square. E7 square can be covered. And let's see what happened in the game. Bishop D5, King C7. King is coming to D6, covering the E7 square. And... Black's pawns on the queen side can be a real, real threat. Bishop d5, king c7, bishop c4, king d6. Black has very big advantage here. Rook f1, a4, f3, rook b8. Now, black is preparing to this stage where they can exchange light square bishops and advance with the king and the pawns. You see, bishop on c4 right now controls the movement of black's queen side pawns. So, after king d6, 
Rook F1, A4, King B8, Rook Rook B8, Rook E2 was played. Now White, I don't know if they want to double on E file. Even if they double all E file, that's exactly what I was talking about. It's absolutely pointless. There is no entry point on the E file, and it also may unleash Black's queen side pawns. Rook E2, Bishop F5. Rook D1, B3, pawn takes B3, pawn takes B3, and G4. Pawn on B3 is extremely dangerous. Bishop D7, of course, uh, black doesn't want to play Bishop C2. This is the move that would give away a half a point, because White will draw after rook takes c2 and rook c1, winning c2 pawn because after rook b2, bishop d3, where they will have relatively easy draw. The only point they have to uh, make here that on rook b3 not to take on c4 because black wins after pinning the uh, bishop to the rook but simple bishop e4 and white is going to take with a rook on c2 it will be a draw black correctly retreats the bishop on d7 rook e3 b2 and at this point it's completely hopeless for white rook takes b3 bishop takes b3 and bishop b5 Black is ready for further advancing of uh, queen side pawns. Bishop a2, king c6, rook d2, king b6, f4, bishop c6 check, king g3, bishop e4, after rook d1, this is all over king b5 king comes in and you see complete domination of black's bishops king b5 rook e1 bishop d3 rook e7 c4 black's pawns are unstoppable rook d7 c3 and if rook takes d4, simply c2, rook d5, check, bishop c5, and white resigned here. After rook takes d3, c2, they're going to be down a queen for a rook, which will indicate that game is over. Very powerful game, not very difficult to understand. Experienced player will realize right away that this position after sacrifice here is very very good position for black because experienced player will see this upcoming movement of uh, black's queen side pawns and king advancing to d6 and black will have total domination all over the board. Very powerful game played by Swidler and very discouraging loss by Ponomarev. Some years ago, there was one variation of King's Inc. defense that I was very much interested in. And I was playing it for white and black and I saw there's some theoretical exchange sacrifice which theory could never determine whether it's good for black or not. Let's look at this position and let's discuss it. Knight f3, knight f6. I'm looking at this position in a view uh, and uh, bringing the game played between two strong players. 
and we're going to see what happened there. d4, d6, c4, c6, knight c3, queen a5, h3. This is very basic opening theory. Bishop e6 attacking c4 pawn. This variation I like to play for black all the time. And uh, I played even in my match on a Rapid World Championship against Karpov, 25 minute championship, where Karpov played queen d3. However, the main move in this position is d5. Well, after d5, c takes d. And here, of course, white cannot play c takes d because they're simply losing the pawn. So knight d4 is the main response, attacking bishop on e6, intending to play cd if bishop retreats. And pawn takes c4 is the exchange sacrifice I want to talk about. Knight bd7. There is knight c6 possible continuation, which is absolutely harmless for black. But let's go with the main variation. Knight takes e6, pawn takes e6, bishop takes a8, and the rook takes a8. Now, this position has to be discussed carefully. Black has only one pawn for exchange. But this position is very close. We have to use here same principles for determining the compensation as we used in a previous game. Black has big presence in its center and they practically control every square in its center. However, the pawns are double. There is no immediate counterplay for black. And they have doubled pawns on e6. So, on the other hand, white shouldn't go e4. e4 is a bad move because that gives black knight an outpost on d3. And if they don't play e4, they have to find some way to develop their pieces quick. The most important fact here that black's positional deficit is minimal. They have a knight and a pawn here for a rook. There are no open files yet, so rooks are not that strong at this point. So what happened in this game? Game was played against German player and uh, Ristich, the Yugoslavian Grandmaster. Let's see what happened. Game was played in 1990, 20 years ago, but not much developed in this variation of King's Indian. So we're going to see what happened. Bishop e3. It's one of the best moves in this position. d5. Okay, black already has very, very strong center. Queen d2 was played. Rook b8. It's not so much attacking b3, b2 pawn. It's mostly preventive move, preventing white from going b3 in the early stage. Rook fd1, while white mobilizes the pieces, knight e5. Bishop d4. Knight c6, and bishop takes f6. In this position, black played bishop takes f6, which is okay, but I much prefer ef. Ef would, give, would have given them clear advantage, because on queen e3, we go king f7, and on rook b1, because b2 was hanging, now f5. 
this gives black absolutely dominating pawn structure and they practically own whole board here. Position is very, very difficult for white. However, bishop takes f6 is understandable because black doesn't want to close their g7 bishop even if it's for one move. Bishop takes f6 was played, rook a b1, king g7, a3, rook b3. a3 was a weak move, in my opinion. Rook b3, king g2, queen b6, rook d, rook d to c1, queen b7. Lining queen on the same diagonal with white's king, knight a4, threatening knight c5, queen b5, knight c3, white will be happy with a draw, queen b8, knight a4, queen d6. You see, this position is of course much better for black, because for the minimal material sacrifice, they have maximum domination uh, in the center. So position is very, very difficult for white. Knight c3, knight d4. But black does not have immediate targets. They, it's very dangerous to move these central pawns because they may become targets. So after rook d1, queen e5, f4, queen b8, now white makes weaknesses, g4, knight c6, rook d to c1. g5 is losing, of course, to bishop takes c3, and white rook is hanging on b1. So rook d to c1 was played. Now h6, knight a4, queen d6, knight c3. White cannot see anything better than going back and forth with a knight. g5, rook f1, g takes f. White cannot recapture on f4 because they lose immediately after bishop takes c3. And this position after g takes f is totally busted for uh, white. f takes e, queen c2, queen e5, rook b to e1, d4, and after knight e4, rook d3, this is uh, knight f2 was played still, and black plays queen d6. Position is so bad that, well actually in this position you have to, queen, rook d2 could have been okay as well, but queen d6, after knight takes d3, cd, Queen takes d3 and bishop h4. Black has enough to win two or three games here. They have a lot more compensation than that they need to win. There's queen g3, check is coming, e5 possible threat, knight e5, queen d5 check. White simply got disgusted with their position and they resigned right here. Very good example of central domination and passive position for white. Now I want to show you a couple of games of my own against the same opening. Well, I find my games very instructive and again they are not brilliant. They are okay games but they're very instructive because that's something may can 
happen in your game anytime. So they are both in King's Indian for black, and they are both with the same variation, which is four pawn attack. Bishop g7, f4. In both games I played c5, they went completely different from one to another. So d takes c, it was in the first game. Queen a5, bishop d3, well of course cd is unacceptable. And this is the theory, queen takes c5, knight f3, castle. Now white has to castle, which is illegal at this moment. So queen e2, they're preparing bishop e3. Knight c6, bishop e3, queen a5, and now white castles. White castles allowing knight g4 and queen b6 check. That's exactly what happened. However, preventing knight g4 may not be such a great idea because on h3 there is knight h5. White somehow stops knight g3 by playing queen f2, then possible bishop h6. So white here simply castled, knight g4, bishop d2, queen b6 check, king h1. And here I made very controversial move. Actually, I analyzed a lot this game before it happened. And game was played in 1961. It was many, many years ago, 61 or 62. This move is a sacrifice because what the idea of queen takes b2 is to give up a queen for insufficient, it's a borderline material compensation, but it's a great positional compensation. After queen takes b2, white has to go rook b1. And white has to play rook a to b1, not rook f to b1. Rook f to b1 is not a good move. The idea of rook b1 is to play knight b5 after queen a3. It's okay to play with a rook because now knight b5 forces queen takes a2. However, if white tries to play the other rook on b1, then after queen a3 and knight b5, black has unexpected shot that ends the game instantly. Queen takes d3 and knight f2 check, winning immediately. So this is sacrifice queen takes b2 because after rook b1, queen a3, knight b5, queen a2, I played this against local master and after queen takes a2, e5, d takes e. And now rook a1. Queen takes a1, rook takes a1. Well, I have to play queen takes a1 because the queen is trapped. I could have gone queen b2, of course. And after rook b1, queen takes a1, which transposes to the same position exactly. And now e4. Black has, white has only two moves. Rook is hanging, bishop is lost. They have to play either rook a3 or rook f1. The reason why they have to be able to recapture after black takes on d3 to recapture back, preventing knight f2 check. So rook a3 was played, and after ed, rook takes d3, bishop f5, rook b3, we can talk about the position. What does black have for a queen? They have, they have a lot. They have a rook, bishop, and two pawns. 
which is almost equivalent, but nevertheless, I call it a sacrifice because... I did not give up a queen for rook, bishop, and two pawns because I have material equivalent of a queen. No, because I have dominating pieces. My bishops are very powerful. My a pawn is very powerful. You see, the a pawn can may go may go express all the way to a one. So this position is difficult for white. A5, H3, A4, let's go quickly through the game. Rook A3, Knight F6. This is complete domination of blind pieces. White has no counterplay. Knight F D4, Knight takes D4, Knight takes D4, and Bishop E4. Very nice position for a bishop. White's rook on a3 committed to start to a4 pawn. So after bishop e4, bishop c3, rook fd8. Now knight on d4 is sh shaky. Knight f3, bishop c6. Very strong position for a bishop, holding a4 pawn. Uh, controlling diagonal and preparing knight e4. And here my opponent played queen takes e7 that leads to complete destruction after rook d1 check. King h2, rook e8, queen c7. But now bishop takes f3, of course taking is absolutely disastrous for white. So white played bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, rook takes f3, and now the absolute killer, bishop h4. The idea is to play rook e1, followed rook e8, e1, followed by rook h1 mate. And here is absolutely no defense. White played f5. Now if I go rook e1, they may have some, like a life extension. Queen c8 check and on king g7 f6. They may have some extension. So, and black must take, because on king h6, queen f8 check. And then white would play rook takes f6, which is also a bad position for white. But black has much stronger continuation. After f5, I played bishop f6, and my opponent resigned immediately. Bishop e5, check is coming, rook e1 is coming, and white is hopelessly lost. As you see, black won game because of their big positional advantage, not because material was even. If material is even, and you have material equivalent for a queen, let me tell you this. You are always better. Why? Because you have more pieces. You are outnumbering your opponent. He has queen, powerful piece, but it's only one piece. You have two or three pieces working. So unless there is not enough material equivalent. Here we had it and we proceeded all the way to a convincing victory. I think this game is instructive. Now I will show you different game. I also played against four pawn attack, but difference in this game that it was all the way I hardly made any moves on my own. It was all the way home preparation. Let's see the game. D4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, e4, d6, f4. 
Now, c5, d5, castle, knight f3, e6, bishop e2, ed, ed, rook e8, castle, and bishop f5. This position is good for black because they are intending to go knight e4. And after they exchange white c3 knight, they will have very powerful bishops. However, white deliberately went to this as a preparation and they played knight h4. Now discouraging this bishop on f5. Now if I go knight e4, there is a possibility of playing knight takes f5, and it's not very clear position, either bishop d3 or maybe king h1. King h1, not good, but even knight takes e4 gives white, in my opinion, some advantage here. They have two bishops, they have good position, and if rook takes e4, there is bishop d3, Anyway, this is not what happened. I prepared against knight h4. Knight takes d5. It looks like very dangerous move because loses material. Queen takes h4, knight c7, and knight c6. Now, in this position, white is winning exchange. White must take one of the black's rook. Which rook would you take? I think over 90% of the people will take on a8 because they want black's rook to stand end up on a8 rather than on e8. However, taking on a8 is a big mistake. My opponent took here very long time considering which rook to take, and he took the right one. The reason why knight takes a8 is instant loser is because of bishop d4. Very unexpected maneuver that ends the game. King h1, and now black is not bothering taking the knight on a8, but bishop f2. And believe it or not, there is no way white can stop bishop g3, attacking mate, and then bishop takes h3. For example, let me show you what I mean. And this will lead to complete destruction of white's king. So there is no defense for white, and if they take in this position, they are only up a piece and they gonna lose a lot more than a minor piece. Bishop on e2 is hanging, bishop cannot move because of rook e1, knight on a8 is hanging, and white is hopelessly lost. So what happened in a game, knight takes e8. I still played bishop d4 check, king h1, but now I simply took on e8, and that's as far as my analysis, pre-game analysis, and I have big faith in this position because black's bishops are completely dominating when white's bishops are powerless. They are terribly placed. Besides, let me explain why on king h1 bishop f2 doesn't work. Now bishop f2 is a big mistake because white has a defense here. Defense is bishop g4. Now on bishop g3 they have simple h3. And if black takes on g4, then after queen takes g4, white is a winner because there is a fork and white wins. So that's why bishop f2 is a bad move and rook takes e8 gives absolutely dominating compensation. G3 was played and uh,
queen h3 and queen e7 was possible also queen h3 I don't remember exactly how game continued but white is nearly lost here knight b4 and knight c2 is threatening h5 h4 is threatening so it's it's impossible for white to defend this position they lost very quickly actually to make sure this position is bad for white just give it to your computer engine and they will prove it in a matter of seconds the position is totally hopeless for white now let me bring you another king's indian defense game this is my game and was my favorite for a while game is not very difficult but is highly instructional on how we take advantage of powerful bishop pair in king's indian we have a lot of those positions where we can get very strong dynamic play and that's exactly what happened in this game it was played against uh, uh, Canadian I am Brian Nikolov back in uh, 1988 d4 I am black g6 c4 go quickly through the opening stage bishop g7 knight f3 c5 e4 d6 knight c3 knight c6 bishop e3 queen b6 knight a4 queen a5 check this is part of the theory bishop d2 queen c7 d5 knight takes knight d4 knight takes d4 and c takes d4 now this position is hard to evaluate black has very strong pawn on d4 at the same time the strong pawn over the time may become a weak pawn knight on a4 is not placed very well on the other hand white has potential of playing b4 and c5 so position is quite double-edged um, and after cd bishop d3 was played knight f6 rook c1 already intending possible c5 so after rook c1 i castled b4 there is no need for white to delay castling but i played e6 black has to get counterplay and develop their pieces very quickly e4 is correct move castle e takes d and c takes d now queen d8 bishop g5 bishop d7 knight b2 knight is aiming to go to c4 where it will be very strong square b5 disabling the knight on b2 it's a very good positional move now white begins attacking d4 pawn and black's task is not just protect that pawn also maintaining very active play after bishop b1 h6 bishop h4 so we took bishop out of h6 c1 diagonal now queen b6 protecting the pawn f3 intending to go bishop f2 position is still unclear a5 with the black i'm desperate to get quickly very active play as soon as possible so bishop f2 pawn is hanging on d4 knight h5 simply protecting the pawn and possibly knight f4 queen d2 
A takes B, rook Fd1. White doesn't care that much about B4 pawn. They want to get central pawn on D4. Now rook Fc8. Now white cannot take on D4 because even after rook takes C8, rook takes C8, bishop takes D4 because they're going to lose a bishop in the end after rook C1 check right here in this position. So pawn is on D4 so far is immune. So after rook Fc8, G4 was played. Now, driving knight back to take on d4. After g4, rook takes c1, queen takes c1, and now knight f6. Bishop takes d4, and queen d8. Now, how do we evaluate this position? To this day, I'm not sure who is better here. White has a lot better pawn structure. Black has double pawns. A2 is potential weakness. White's king position is compromised. So, in my opinion, black has good play here. Besides, knight on b2 is not placed that great. And black is about to take over the c file. I was happy with my position at this point. After queen d8, knight d3 was played, and I went rook c8, queen b2 doubling on diagonal, rook c4, knight takes b4, and here comes the sacrifice, and after this sacrifice, rook takes d4, rook takes d4, black is only exchanged down, they have complete dominance on dark square. Now, here's what happened. Knight takes g4, f takes g. Of course, I don't want to take rook on d4 because I'm going to be a piece down and move like queen b6 is going to do very little because knight c2. And white is upper rook now, but if black takes the rook, there will be upper piece and very limited resources for black. But this positional sacrifice was based on queen g5 move. And after queen g5, I'm absolutely out of trouble with black. Knight c6 was played, queen takes g4, king h1, Queen f4, threatening mate on f1. Queen g2. Bishop takes c6. Now, if white takes, then bishop takes d4. And black has a huge advantage, since c pawn is not that strong due to a queen c1 mating threat. But, White saved its rook, rook d1, and bishop d7. Actually, this is the key position I was aiming for. I am down, black is down, only very, very little. They have bishop and a pawn for a rook. This is the minimal uh, uh, material disadvantage you can have. And something strange to me was here when I analyzed this game much, much later uh, with Ripka and with other engines here, position was evaluated as equal, where, which I absolutely disagree with. In my opinion, black has sizable advantage. However, it's not easy to win. Maybe the fact that it's not easy to win makes computer engine evaluate as equal. But it's by no means this position is equal. And as we go farther into analysis, 
Ripka starts, uh, Ripka and, and Houdini also, all the top engine, they start little by little uh, agreeing with my evaluation that black is much better. Well, there is absolutely dominant bishop on g7 that will eventually go to e5, and white has no play, and the terrible bishop on b1. This must be and has to be much better for black, otherwise all the basics chess principle, they mean nothing. So in this position, after bishop d7, White played rook f1. I have to point to you that after queen f2 and queen e7, there was a lot of maneuvering. But you know, black can make from now on like 20, 30 moves without damaging position and still have the same setup. I think that's what happened, only not 20 less. Uh, queen f2, queen e7, bishop d3. Uh, we mount the bishop on e5, rook b1, pawn is hanging on b5, queen g5. Now taking pawn is very dangerous uh, for several reasons. First of all, black can play bishop h3. Also, there is a move like Queen g4, attacking e4 pawn. Well, anyway, white didn't take on b5. They played rook g1. Queen d8. And now rook b1. Queen a5. Rook f1, attacking the f7 square, bishop e8. Queen c2. King g7. So far, it's just slightly improving position for black. It's not creating any immediate threats. After bishop e8, white played queen c2, king g7, and rook b1. Now, they're still intending to attack the b pawn at some point. Bishop d7, queen e2, and very strong move, h5. This position is extremely difficult for white. And what white did is they played bishop takes b5, and after this, Black's is, black is nearly winning. I mean, black is winning. If queen c2, here, in this position, if white doesn't take, that's not going to help much. Then black continues improving position, maybe with queen a3. Well, however, after bishop takes b5, on the other hand, white was tired of passively protecting their position. Bishop g4 and queen g2. Well, queen c2 was the other option. They both losing. On queen c2, bishop f3 check. Actually, this is very interesting transformation into completely winning position. And now after queen d8, white is completely helpless from uh, nearly mating attack. So queen g2 was played, but that's what... Uh, I was tending to play bishop f3 here. And after bishop f3, everything is forced. Queen must take on f3. And with the extra rook, uh, white is completely lost. Well, it's extra rook only for one move because rook on b1 is gone due to queen takes h2 mating threat. And after queen takes a2, bishop e2, queen takes b1, king g2. This is one of those positions. The, the advantage, black's advantage, is not so much 
an extra pawn, it's dominant bishop. And there are some positions where opposite color bishops are bad for defending side because black has such a big positional advantage and uh, possibility for delivering very strong attack. And let me um, guide you through the um, end of the game. Queen c1, h3, queen g5, check, king f1, bishop d4, threatening mate on g1, bishop d1, queen g1, king e2, and now g5. Now we're activating our g pawn and white's position becomes totally hopeless. Queen cannot take on h5 because it's just a simple mate in two moves. And queen f2. So pawn on h5 is immune. Then king d3 was played. Now bishop e5 and again now we're threatening g4 and on h g possibly h4 black has huge positional advantage white took the pawn on h5 but now they're going to be two pawns down queen d4 check king e2 queen takes e4 check king f1 queen h1 check king f2 and now very powerful move, bishop g3 check. Uh, white cannot take this bishop because after queen g1 check, white loses bishop and the queen. Only move and after queen takes g1 it's resignable. So after bishop g3 check, the game is practically uh, over. King e3 was played, bishop f4, king f2, queen takes d5, and on queen f3, we simply moved queen e5, and position is totally lost, and slowly, if it, actually this position cannot be won in a couple of moves, and slowly, I went on winning the game. I won this game, and I think it was very instructive game. And let me make a little statement here. In order for us to sacrifice some material for positional gain, we have to recognize position with positional gain very well. Otherwise, our sacrifice will make no sense. If we go back uh, several moves and we see this position, unless you recognize that over the next seven or eight moves, black built very strong position with a counterplay on the uh, dark squares and sacrifice the exchange. Unless you evaluate that power of your dark square bishop, you cannot sacrifice. You cannot do on a maybe. You have to strongly believe in your plan. Only then you can be successful because when you sacrifice and have positional compensation for material, your confidence must be on the highest level. And that's exactly what happened in this game. That's why I am proud of this game. I'm proud not because I played brilliantly. No, I played well, I played okay, but mostly because my evaluation was correct. My prediction was correct and execution also was on a relatively high level. I found this game very, very instructive. Now, let me bring you one game 
that was played with accelerated dragon. It was poor play by White in the opening and very strong play by the Black in the middle game. This game was played between two masters, e4, c5, knight f3, g6. And it's just like King's India. Here, we're going to get pressure on dark squares and sacrifice exchange for it, just as we looked in a previous example. And knight f3, g6, d4, c takes d, knight takes d4, knight c6, knight c3, bishop g7, bishop e3, this is accelerated dragon, knight f6, and f3. It's not the best move in this position, actually it's not even recommended move. Uh, black castle, queen d2, and this is advantages of uh, playing accelerated dragon because you may go d5 and not like in a regular dragon where you play d6 first and then d5. Knight takes c6, b takes c, e takes d, knight takes d5, and now bishop d4. After bishop d4, I think the best way to play bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes, and then e5. Of course, pawn cannot be taken, and black has better position. However, e5 immediately was played in the game, which is also a good option. And on bishop c5, bishop e6, simply leaving the rook on f8 and pre. Bishop takes f8, queen takes f8, and let's talk about this position. This position is extremely difficult for uh, white and computer engines evaluate as slight advantage for black where I again I disagree with this evaluation I think the advantage black's advantage is much bigger than slight I think it's sizable uh, <coughs> the reason why of course, castling is losing here because of bishop h6. But to understand position, let's for a minute ignore bishop h6 move. That wins immediately, of course. But black has decisive attack on white's king. If they go rook b8, followed by queen b4, and black has every piece attacking white's king. Knight on d5, bishop on d6, uh, potential deadly power of g7 bishop after black plays e4, that makes white's position absolutely hopeless. And white, of course, didn't castle because of bishop h6, and in this position they played knight takes d5. c takes d5 and c3. Now this is an interesting position. White is up in exchange and they have no weaknesses. They have no weak points. Their king is not in danger. They have bad position. Why? Because of power of dark squares, domin black's dominance on dark squares that you don't see yet, but upcoming you're going to see it very clearly. If pawn was on f2, it would have been a lot better for white. But now, c after c3, rook b8, bishop d3, and here is white is one move away from the happiness, and the happiness would be if they can castle king side. After bishop d3, bishop h6, queen e2, Queen c5. So white's castling on either side postponed indefinitely. Well, 
after queen c5, of course, taking on e5 will lead to a complete disaster. White has absolutely crushing attack here. And, well, black couldn't have foreseen, and nobody could, that black is going to get very decisive attack. This is more like pressure. It's not an attack. Attack when you create concrete threats and you try to destroy them. But here is ongoing, long-term, very powerful initiative. So, rook d1, mounting bishop to e3, and this is like it won't let white king breed. King f1, f5, b4, queen b6, g3, and f4. King g2, rook c8. White must protect the pawn on e3, queen b2, and e4. This position is already overwhelming and hopelessly lost. White should have played bishop e2 with some hopes, and the only hope actually they have here is not that they may somehow survive. In those type of positions, only hope is if your opponent mess, okay, uh, make some bad mistakes and you can survive. However, they took on e4, but then it's all over. f takes e, f3, and white simply resigned here. If they play king takes f3, then rook f8 check, and doesn't matter whether king goes to g2 or e2, there will be, in both cases, there will be rook f2 check, winning the queen, and having decisive positional and material advantage. So, but running with the king on f1 uh, is maybe a lot worse. Now here, black can do almost anything they want. I wouldn't play here f2, they can go bishop g2, and rook is gone, or they can try to um, play something like queen f6, or queen e6 and queen g4. They have multiple ways to winning the position where no white piece can move anywhere. It's absolute horror picture for white. And again, great positional sacrifice with very clear example of total dominance of two bishops. It's not so much two bishops in this position where white won an exchange. It's not so, so much two bishops. It's presence of dark square bishop for black. White doesn't have dark square bishop. If white doesn't have dark square bishop, their dark squares will be hopelessly lost. And that's what caused total destruction in this game. I found it very, not difficult, a very good example. Here is the game of mine. I want to show you where it's a lot easier to understand positional compensation because it's a lot clearer and you practically can point your finger to several types of compensations for black. And as I said, when you sacrifice some material, material like light material, like a pawn, maybe exchange, maybe queen for rook, knight, and a pawn, so where the other side's material advantage is not decisive, and you get some compensation. Carl, I cannot tell you, there is no chart where I can tell you, well, this and this type of uh, compensation worth a pawn, this one is two pawns, no. You have to know, you have to understand position, and you have to know what makes an advantage. 
an strategical advantage, strategical plus in your position, and then you can determine whether it's worth a pawn or exchange or something like that. And to do that, you have to see a lot of different examples. So I showed you a number of examples of positional sacrifice, and you see some of them similar ideas, similar type of combinations, and in some of them different. So once you see enough of the positions of different kind, you will be able to perform those sacrifices yourself. That's exactly the way I learned and I got great knowledge by looking at the different types of position, but different, many different strong players. I can't even recommend you one particular player that is specialized on sacrifice because specializing on sacrifice is, is not a right term because it's like specializing on mate on G2. There is no such a thing. When there is mate on G2, anybody can see mate on G2. And specializing in sacrifice, that means when it gets there, any good positional player should recognize it. So let's look at this game that I told you, very easy to recognize. It was played by me against not such a strong player. It was an expert, but it's strong enough for us to go over the game and to look what went wrong for white in this game. It's a Paulson variation of Sicilian. Knight takes d4, a6. Knight c3, b5. Bishop d3. We're going to go quickly and skip the opening part. Castle and d6. Bishop e3. This is a mistake. The correct move is a4, b4, and knight a2. This is theory. So, but we're going to go with the game. Bishop e3, knight f6, now threatening b4 and winning the e4 pawn. So a3 was played. Knight d7, f4. Bishop e7, queen f3. Rook c8. Rook a e1. Castle. And g4. Now, this is a typical move in these types of position Sicilian. White wants to play g5 and slowly start attacking on the king side. Meanwhile, e4 pawn is protected, but g4 is a losing move because after rook takes c3, black sacrificed exchange. I sacrificed exchange and now e4 pawn is doomed. And after knight c5, Knight c5 was played, bishop c1, and queen a8. It's obvious that e4 pawn is gone because there is no piece that can protect e4 again, e4 pawn. Black is attacking e4 pawn four times, white is protecting three times, and they cannot bring another defense. And notice that after we take on e4 with the f6 knight, white's king position is very badly compromised and black is going to have tremendous positional advantage. So at this point I would say white is completely lost. So after queen a8, g5 was played. Knight f takes e4, queen h3, and white's play from now on was absolutely erratic, and uh, and they they made some bad mistakes here. Queen h6. I, they're probably hoping to play rook f3 or rook e3 and rook h3. This is not going to happen. Rook c8, very strong move. 
transferring bishop from e7 to g7. After rook c8, rook f3, bishop f8, queen h4, knight takes g5, or attacking the rook on f3 with the bishop, rook f to e3, knight takes d3, well, now, after cd, knight f3, we got type of position, knight takes f3, bishop takes f3, there is no longer sacrifice, because now we have full compensation for the exchange, we have two pawns and a bishop for exchange, white has multiple weaknesses, terrible king position, and therefore they are absolutely lost. Queen f2, bishop b7 was played, rook g3, we continue improving position of our pieces, bishop g7, bishop b2, well actually rest is not as important now to see d4, rook f5, rook g5, bishop d5, and after rook takes e5, ef, queen e2, bishop f8. Well, I have to show you this is ironic that queen c6, bishop d2, bishop e4. When you have an exchange, advantage of exchange, that means rook for a minor piece, you have to try to use your rook on open file. There is no open file for white in this uh, position, and nor they ever got open file. Game ended very quickly. Queen f1, king g7, the rook c1, we went d5, now attacking a3 pawn, and after rook a1, bishop d6, queen e2, well, you see that all white can do to play queen e2, f2, the rook is dedicated to protect the pawn on a3, position is terrible, it's total positional disaster, and white lost. Actually, they died in agonizing slow death. Here is no way to survive this position. This is as big of a positional advantage maybe you can possibly get. A very instructive play by black, although white w was not playing on highest level. Now, I want to show you one game that I played, I found it instructive, and it's easy for me to deliver analysis and explain the essence and main reason for my sacrifice of exchange. Actually, I saw one game played on high level in a similar style, and I copied this style, I learned from it, and I played myself quite instructive game. It was center counter, e4, d5. Again, we're going to go quickly with the opening. d4, knight takes d5, knight f3, g6, c4, knight b6, knight c3, bishop g7, c5, knight d5, bishop c4, and c6, castle for both sides, queen b3, knight takes c3, b takes c3, b6, c takes b, a takes b. Let me tell you a few words about this position. Black has very nice pawn structure, actually a little better than whites, because they have two pawn islands versus three pawn islands, and only problem here, after rookie one, they have to finish their development of 
queen side pieces. And the only way to do that, they have to put bishop on e6. So b5, bishop d3, and after bishop e6, I played rook takes e6, fe, queen takes e6. It's a strictly positional sacrifice. Let's explain the way of thinking in this position. Okay, we are down an exchange, but we have a pawn for it. Plus, we have very dangerously placed two bishops that are aiming on the king's side. I had hopes of winning with direct king side attack, but I said if not, then I'm gonna have very strong positional compensation. My knight will go to g5, and I'm definitely gonna weaken black's king, and also I may have potential outpost on e5, and total domination in the center. I was right. Now, let's go on with this. I played knight g5, and here, we have immediate threat. Threat is knight takes h7. For example, just to show you, besides knight f7, there is also knight takes h7 uh, a threat and queen takes g6. White has multiple threats. Queen d7 is absolutely forced. And now I could have simply played knight f7 because if black plays king g8, they get mated after double check, queen g8 check, and world's famous smothered mate. Um, however, I decided my position is stronger than playing this position with just an extra pawn. And uh, knight a6, white has an advantage I thought it was not as good as if I continued pressing on in the center. I played simply queen e4. Idea is to go queen h4 and also knight takes h7. Queen d5, queen h4. Well, actually, the possibility, I was very tempted to go to queen takes d5, and then bishop takes b5, but I thought if I didn't want to take exchange, I shouldn't even exchange queens here. Queen h4, h6, and I retreated my knight, and I decided that the best square for a knight. Here is what you have to do. Once you sacrifice material, you have to be precise. You've got to make sure that your pieces end up in the best position. Now, not very difficult, but very strong move is knight h3. Now, you're attacking h6 pawn, but you would have attacked no matter where you went with the knight. But knight has deadly intentions of going to f4 and totally smashing uh, black's queen side. After knight h3, rook takes a2 was played. Queen h5 would have ended up with complete disaster as well. Knight f4, knight g6 is threatening, knight e6, knight takes h5, but this could have been the best chance for black to resist. Now if king g8 we have bishop c2 and bishop is going to b3. White has enormous uh, advantage here. Again, that's something you may double check with your computer engine. So in this position, rook takes a2 was played. Black tried to resist in an active manner. So they played rook takes a2, rook takes a2, queen takes a2, and bishop takes h6. King g8, bishop takes g7. Now, of course, the back rank, our back rank is secured after bishop f1, and on bishop takes g7, king 
two con g7, now knight g5, and this means that the end is near. There is a queen h7 threat, and if rook h8, then queen f4, intending queen e5, and black's position is absolutely hopeless. Queen g8 was played, however, and after queen g8, queen e4, attacking e7, queen e4, king h8, now queen e5, and after rook f6, now we get our material back, and after we win exchange, we're going to be up a pawn, and continuing the attack. My opponent resigned in this position, because position is absolutely hopeless for black here. Something like knight d7 may get to this, and knight takes e5, knight takes g8, and then knight takes e7, winning almost all black's pawns. Position is hopeless, and black reside. So, what we did on this DVD is just we went to the multiple different types of uh, compensations for sacrificed material. And you see that every time it's either dominance on a dark square, so light squares, uh, vice versa, or dominance in the center, or having powerful bishops, pair bishops, or having very strong pass pawns, as we saw in the Swindler's game against Ponomarev in a game one. So in every case, the sacrifice was very, very good, very powerful. But every time you sacrifice and you make good sacrifice, remember, if that doesn't work, doesn't get discouraged. You have to analyze this game. And this is the only way you can learn how to play positions with positional advantage. You can learn a lot about positional sacrifices and by doing that you can learn a lot how to become a better chess player so I hope you learned a lot from this DVD and I thank you very very much and I see you very soon thank you again